halfway between Swansea and Brecon, close to the Brecon beacons, an outcrop of limestone rock contrasts with the sandstone and millstone grit of the surrounding hills. This is an area where streams disappear underground, only to reappear miles away as springs down in the valley bottom. One such stream bursts forth into a steep-sided valley from the darkness of a cave mouth. Local farming brothers Ashwell and Jeff Morgan often wondered what they might find beyond the daylight. In 1912, they set off to explore the cave, using a coracle to cross the lakes that barred their way. In the flickering shadows, their candles revealed a world of stalactites and stalagmites, a complex network of passages that had lain hidden in complete darkness for countless thousands of years. The many visitors that now come to visit Danarogov experience these caves very differently from that overwhelming moment when the Morgan brothers first shed light upon these underground marvels. Now, with the safety of concrete pathways and electric lighting, they too can gaze upon and wonder at the magic of these ancient forms that so long lay undiscovered, unknown. A visit to what is now the National Showcase Centre for Wales takes the visitor on a journey. A journey that begins long before man even set foot on earth. When dinosaur bones were first discovered, it became apparent that the surface of our planet had experienced immense changes. Dinosaurs captured and continued to capture the imagination of the public, young and old alike. But few consider that the limestone rock in which these caves are formed dates back to a time even before dinosaurs existed. It is a rock rich in fossils, and it is those fossils that give us a clue to its origins. These productive seashells and this fossil coral can only come from a seabed, and what is more, a shallow sea in a tropical climate. This is a modern coral reef. Life here is abundant. It was in an environment like this, something like 340 million years ago, that a chalky deposit was laid down that would one day become the limestone rock we now see around us in Danarogov. This deposit comes from the remains of the skeletons from generations of sea creatures, which gathered in deep layers on the bed of a tropical sea. What is most difficult to comprehend is that the sea in question was situated somewhere close to the equator. About 340 million years ago, the area that would one day become the British Isles was probably somewhere in the position indicated. The landmass was already on the move. Great fractures were appearing and slowly but surely, the continental plates were drifting apart. And as the millennia passed, so the continents in the form we now know so well began to take shape. By the time it neared its present position, the limestone rock had undergone great changes. It was no longer the soft chalky deposit that once lay on that ancient seabed. 
The journey had subjected it to enormous pressures, crushed it and distorted it. In the process, it had turned into a hard and a very valuable rock. Modern civilization now depends heavily on quarried limestone. Our buildings and our roads contain huge quantities of it. It is a major ingredient in concrete and many of our basic construction materials. But it also plays an important role in the manufacture of steel and so many other less obvious processes, like the refining of sugar, for example, and the making of toothpaste. But there is one particular characteristic that makes this limestone very different to any other rock. And that is that a relatively weak acid can dissolve it. And as rain falls from the clouds, it dissolves carbon dioxide from the air and so becomes a weak solution of carbonic acid. On these limestone pavements of the north, the effects are apparent. The joints, fractures in the rock have been opened up into deep fissures. Through them, the water penetrates underground, and there the effects are even more dramatic. But some 20,000 years ago, most surface water had been frozen. Britain was in the grips of the Great Ice Age. Enormous sheets of ice covered the landscape. As they moved, they scoured away the surface rocks often uncovering more of the harder limestone rock below. But there were intervening warm periods, interglacial where the ice melted, releasing huge volumes of water. The swollen rivers sank into the newly exposed limestone and underground rivers and cave passages began to form. But the Ice Age was to return, this time in the form of valley glaciers. It was these that created the broad U-shaped valleys that are so familiar to us today. But they also had a dramatic effect below ground. Once the limestone was exposed, the sinking water had begun to carve out the first caves. Their depth was limited to the depth of the valley where the stream re-emerged. But now the valley glaciers came and they cut the valley deeper and more steep-sided. Then, once again, the ice retreated. The debris the ice left behind blocked many of the caves, but now the water was able to open up deeper routes to the new valley floor. At some stage, before that last downcutting of the valleys, there is little doubt that a large river flowed through the majestic passages of Cathedral Cave, bigger than the one that now runs in the lower passages of Dan the Rogov. Now the river has gone, and a new process is happening here. The roof of Cathedral Cave is covered by many hundreds of delicate, actively growing straw stalactites. But how do such delicate structures form? As water percolates through the limestone of the cave roof, there is a brief pause while the drip grows before it falls to the floor. A little of the water evaporates, and a minute amount of the limestone that is dissolved within it is forced out and is deposited round the edges of the drip. It forms a crystalline form of calcium carbonate known as calcite. Maintaining its diameter drip by drip, it grows longer and creates the thin hollow type of cave formation that, for obvious reasons, we call a straw. But crystals also have a tendency to grow on the inside of the straw, and so it becomes partially and sometimes completely blocked. The water is now forced to flow down the outside and the formation grows thicker as well as longer. Now the more conventional conical stalactite shape starts to form. On the floor where the drips land and splash, evaporation is also taking place and calcite is being deposited. Here, the high roof makes the landing point of each drip different from the one before. The result is large areas of flowstone. However, in the Danarogov show cave, a lower roof results in more conventional stalagmite formations.
In Danarogov, we can also see some very fine examples of calcite curtains. This type of formation forms where water runs down a sloping wall. The bands of colour within it show how the formation has grown outwards, layer upon layer. The Morgan brothers may have opened the door on all of these wonders, but we now know that man and cave came together at Danarogov thousands of years earlier. More than 42 human skeletons have been discovered in Bourne Cave. We will never know when the first humans set foot in these caves. Perhaps it was to escape from the weather outside, or perhaps to hide from an enemy. But it is possible that they were driven by that same curiosity that continues to drive us today. Archaeological digs, which are reconstructed in the cave, have shown that the cave contains evidence of human occupation from the Bronze Age and also from Roman times. Stone circles and avenues of standing stones have recently been erected in the grounds of the show caves to pay tribute to those who built similar monuments and burial chambers among the surrounding hills. Could it be that the Bronze Age workers that erected the originals were from the same group whose remains were found buried in Bourne Cave? How they moved those enormously heavy blocks still remains something of a mystery. It still isn't easy even with the help of modern heavy machinery. Each era, each generation has left its mark on this landscape. The reconstruction of an Iron Age farm gives visitors some insight into life in this valley about two and a half thousand years ago. The modern age of science and exploration only really started in the mid 1800s. With primitive equipment, some of the early attempts to explore caves were sometimes, well, a bit hit and miss. Modern cave explorers, even with the help of new equipment and improved technique, must still face many discomforts and difficulties underground. However, the discoveries they have made over the years have added greatly to what we now know and understand about our country's limestone caves. So far, beyond the public section of the caves at Danarogov, over nine miles of passages have been explored and there is no doubt a lot still undiscovered. Many of the wonderful features that are to be found in these caves can only ever be seen by those with enough courage and skill to reach them. Most people who visit the National Show Cave Centre for Wales come just to enjoy a great day out in pleasant and entertaining surroundings. If then they go away with a little more feeling for those times past, then it is an added bonus. The Shire Horse Centre, the farm animals and the animated models are all designed to add to the overall Morgan Brothers experience. What then might the Morgan Brothers think now if they could see what pleasures their early discoveries have brought? But perhaps it's their dog that should have the last word. I hope you enjoyed the caves which my masters found all those years ago.